praise the Lord. So Saul now was being left down the wall. And slowly they left him down. Amen. And nobody left go of the rope. You or I, at this midnight hour of time, you may be called to hold the rope when things are at their darkest. The little things that you and I do for Christ, I'm talking to believers here today, little things that you and I do for others as unto the Lord, in the darkest hour you might feel like it don't mean nothing, but whatever you're doing, as you do it as unto the Lord, see, God has prepared that plan. Remember about being a doorkeeper at the house of the Lord? Some of you have been cleaning in the house of the Lord. Some of you have the caretakers of the house of the Lord. What would happen if somebody wouldn't do that job? They're needed. I've done that for years for my pastor. Walked down to the church and shoveled with, my bear, with a shovel Amen. Make sure the church parking lot and the church uh, street was cleared off in the city at that time. Or, and I even took my daughter along with me. We would walk down from our apartment with snow, amen, up to our knees and up to our waist. Then go down there and make sure that was all cleared out so God's house could be cleared out for people that want to come in. And then we would walk back and then we would do the apartment where we live so we could get in. We didn't have to do that, but we wanted to do that. And God slowly blessed us. Many times I would walk around the church and don't ask me how they got there because nobody ever threw them there and pick up handkerchiefs and pieces of paper and stuff. And, you know, and I know Christians didn't throw them there. But they needed to be picked up. And see, it's the little things that God will bless you with. See, a guy can show you, and to this day yet, this preacher, I still pick stuff off the floor. I still help to clean. I still do... Uh, jobs around the house of the Lord. Well, I'm not ashamed of that. I've been brought up that way, and if I see something that needs done, I do it. Amen? And guess what? I don't do it as unto man pleaser. I do it as unto the Lord because it's the Lord that has given me life to be able to do it. So guess what? Those that bought the rope, those that bought the basket, and those that held the rope, their names are not mentioned, but guess what? The Bible mentions them because Saul's ministry, who later became Paul, and you ever wonder why God changed his name? See, there's a purpose when somebody's name is changed. There's a reason why the name is changed. And a lot of people used to say, well, God changed Paul's name from Saul to Paul because people were afraid of the name Saul and they would be more open to the name Paul. No, that's part of it, but that's not the whole reason why it was changed. The main reason why it was changed, when you become the property of somebody else, they have the right to name you and call you what they desire to call you. Saul didn't belong to Christ. Paul committed to Christ. Now he belonged to Christ. And Christ renamed him Paul. Paul means little one. Before he was called the mighty Saul that would persecute the church. So he called him Paul, because he belonged to God. See, just like me and my wife, I shared it with the church the other week where we preach and minister. I says, we went out to the SPCA one day because we wanted to have a dog and we wanted to rescue a dog and bring it home. And we looked through the dog pound and we found this one we like. And at the dog pound, they had a name on there and it said, his name is blah, 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 blah. And the people that owned him before, we don't know what his name was, but this is what they call him. And then when we were in there, his name was blah, 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 whatever they called him. But when we got him, we renamed him. His name is Sir Lancelot. <laughs> Amen. And guess what? That's what we call him. And guess what that dog responds to? The name that his new owners call him. The ones that love him, the ones that feed him, the ones that have plans for him, the ones that provide for him. He learned to answer to that name. Paul is learning to answer to Christ because somebody held the rope, somebody bought the rope, somebody got the right size basket, somebody was willing to let him down through the window so they couldn't kill him because somebody said, now he belongs to God. 
You don't know how many times you prayed for somebody in your prayer closet. You cried, cried your eyes out, and you, don't, and you don't see no change in that person. But see, but God's got a plan. And later on, when that plan's fulfilled because you prayed, your prayers are not in vain. I'm trying to stir up some good prayer warriors back into the church. Intercessory prayer, where God will speak to somebody's name and say, Lord, I don't know who this person is, but Lord, you laid it on my heart, I'm going to pray for them. I don't know them. I'm not going to pray for them. Well, see, you're not being subject to the Word of God. These people didn't know who Paul would become because he was still Saul, but they willingly got in unity and left him down the window. And they held the rope till he reached the lower ground. The rope had to be long enough. It wasn't a coincidence, like I said. Who had the right length of the rope? God already prepared that rope to be the right length. Who had a basket was big enough and the right size that... He could fit in it. Not only that could he fit in it, it had to be the right size window to get it through the window. The window had to be the right size. The wall had to be at the right location. Not only that, the garrison that was guarding the entrances in the walls, it was at a spot where they couldn't even see it being done. Why? Because God already had a plan. God has prepared a way. Some of you say, there ain't no way I can get out of this mess. There ain't no way I can get through this situation. God has prepared a way. Your way out of your mess, out of your sin, out of your discouragement and your despair is the cross of Jesus Christ. You go to him, amen, just like Saul was told to go to a certain city. I'm telling you, you go to the cross of Jesus. And I got news for you. God has prepared a plan. Things are going to change. It's going to come out for the best. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, God is faithful. Remember he prepared the way? God is faithful. With your temptation, your problem. How many ever had problems? Praise God, I got my hand up, my feet up, and everything else up. Amen. God is faithful with your temptation, with your problem. He will make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. With your problem, God is making a way. Saul had a problem right now. Everybody's trying to kill me. What am I going to do? God says, I prepared a way for you. I got the rope already. I got the basket already. I got the right disciples there already. I got the right location there already. I got the window already open. I got the wall way to wait of escape. The rope's long enough to get you out of here. God knows. What does God tell you? In Psalms 54, 7 and 4, he has delivered me out of the, all trouble. God delivered him out of that trouble, but he needed people, the helps ministry, those that were willing to be the helps ministry, the right hand of the ministry, the left hand of the ministry, those that are willing to serve and their names are never mentioned. But guess what? God says, okay, my plan is to get you out, deliver you out of that trouble. Amen. In Psalms 31, verse 2, he says, he will deliver thee speedily. Now, the word deliver means something. It means to be set free, to restore, to rescue. Paul was rescued that day. You need to deliver or rescue from a situation? Guess what? Call on him. God will do it speedily. God already has a plan. The first plan he was to get you to the cross of Jesus Christ to save you, to forgive you, to restore you. Amen. That's what... The, uh, deliverance means to restore back to the original plan of God. Get your life together. Fellowship with believers. Get around people that are going to pray with you and encourage you and to say, good job, brother, good job, sister. That don't mean you lost your reward. When I see somebody doing I say, thank you. There's old-fashioned words that I grew up in the generation I grew up. It's called please and thank you. Thank you and please. You don't hear that much anymore. But I got news for you. The word please and thank you will open up many doors of opportunity for you. They will also give you plenty of easy paths to walk on. It will show you respect from other people because you're showing respect back to that people. And you know, when you say thank you to God, Lord, I thank you. I can imagine Paul Every time he was pursued and beat with many stripes and shipwrecked and left for death so many times, later on he always thought back, you know, God, I thank you. I thank you. 
I thank you that they can't destroy me. And I can imagine him singing that song when they found the, the journey was over. He said, I run my race very well. And they were taking him down the path, and they were going to cut his head off for serving Christ. And you know what he said to him? I'm going to receive a crown. They looked at him and said, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> You're going to receive a crown. You ain't even going to have a head to put it on. <laughs> he said, I'm going to receive a crown. Why? Because God has prepared a plan. And he had said, to be absent from my body, to be present with the Lord. See, God's got a plan for each and every one of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, he does. Amen. Psalms 50, verse 15. I preached on it a little bit the other month, and guess what? It still goes in the Bible. Call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will deliver thee. Amen. And thou shalt glorify me. See, when God has a plan, he made a way of a plan of escape. Amen. Don't concentrate it on your problems. God is bigger than our problem. How many know God's bigger than your problem? There's a song out, through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. And part of the lyrics in there said, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. You know, only way God could solve your problem is if you call on him and ask him to help you in your problems. And he will deliver you and help you. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord. Who are you supposed to trust in? The Lord. Who am I supposed to trust in? The Lord. Remember, God is faithful with your temptation, with your problem. He will make a way to escape from your problem that you may be able to bear it. Amen? Because why? I'm trusting in the Lord out of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways, in all thy ways, in every situation, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He shall show you a way out of this situation. Saul, your way out of this situation is to go into this city where I told you. Even though they're going to try to kill you, I have a plan. There's a certain place with a certain amount of disciples that have the rope, that has a basket, that has a window already prepared to follow my plan to get you out of this trouble that you're in right now. Follow my footsteps. What if he would have panicked and tried to run out the front gate? They would have got him. What if he would have tried to climb over the wall and jump down? They would have got him. What if he would have had his own plan and got his own people involved? They would have failed. Some of you had your own plans out there, and your plans are falling. It's a big failure in your life. You wonder why things ain't quite working out. Why? Because you didn't let God have his plan. Amen. See, God wants to direct our path. God will direct our lives. God will direct your life if you let him to. Saul's life was changed into Paul. He will lead us. Amen. He will help you make decisions. You want good counsel and you want good advice? Get around God's word and also get around believers that know God's word. Good godly counseling with good godly knowledge with good God, the understanding. Amen. Praise the Lord. God tells us that we can come to him with every choice that is ours and let our request be known unto him. Amen. Turn with me in Philippians chapter 4. Verse 5 and 6. That your moderations be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. What is your request today? What do you need from God? What is your trouble? Is people coming against you to persecute you? Or you feel like there's no way out of the mess? Amen. See, God wants you to get in unity. In Psalms 133, verse 1, he says, Amen, how good it is, amen, when the brethren get together in unity. 
to get around with people in unity. Would you think the people that helped Saul get delivered down through that window were working in unity? They weren't saying, you ain't getting my rope. You can use the basket, but you're not borrowing my rope. That wasn't unity. Somebody could say, well, you got the rope, but you're not using my basket. That wasn't unity. Somebody say, well, you can get the rope and the basket together, but I'm not holding it. That wasn't unity. When they all got together in unity and said, okay, you bought the rope, you bought the basket, let's put it together, let's put Saul in the basket, let's get him down through that window. See, somebody had to volunteer that window to be used and that location. It was all done in unity with God's plan. When you get together in unity and let God let your request be known unto the Lord and get known unto him, God will do the blessings. In Philipp Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Praying always, praying always, with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching, therefore, with preservance and supplications for the saints. Praying always. That means, okay, let your request be known to the Lord, and pray unto him, and trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. God wants you to call on him, and get your life together with him, and God has prepared a way for you. Sometimes the conditions might not seem like they're changing. I've been there. You've been there. She's been there. We've been there. And sometimes you might be there. But, the, but our attitude changes. Get your attitude to change. If it starts here, it will spread out there. You know, these people could have had a bad attitude. He was killing Christians. He was persecuting family members. Some of the relatives that he persecuted were related to me. Why should I bother helping him? Wrong attitude. The condition might not change, but our attitude can change. This, in turn, once your attitude changes, what? Can change the circumstances. How many would like some of your circumstances right now to change? Get the right attitude. Get the mind of Christ. Amen. God knows of our difficulties, and God knows of our problems. He knows all about you. And he does have an answer. We need to trust him, and he will direct our paths that we read there in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Are you trusting in God? You know, you ever look at some of the money that you pass through your hands every day, and even though it might be few or a lot, but it has on there in the United States of America, in God we trust. Well, guess what? This nation is not trusting in God no more. Your society that you're living in is not trusting God no more. Maybe you're not trusting God no more. But praise God, there's still a remnant of us that still trust in God. I trust in God. Without trusting in God, guess what? He can't direct my path. They can take it off my money, but they can't take it out of my spirit. Why? Because God planted it down in there. I need to trust in God and let him direct my path. Amen. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, we said a while ago, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. I don't know what lies ahead, but I know what ahead is better than anything I left behind. And when I call on him, I don't always have the answer, but I know the answer is worthwhile waiting for, because my request was known unto the Lord. Many times I thought situations should have worked out a certain way, but after God worked them out, I'm glad it was God's way and not my way. Aren't you glad that God has a way and there seems to be no way? Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Amen. Psalms 32, verse 8, I will instruct thee and I will teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Now, God could see everything that Saul had to walk into. God says, I have a plan. Somebody, Saul, has a rope waiting for you. I can imagine some, oh, they're going to hang me. God could have said, Saul, somebody has a basket there. Oh, they're going to kill me and wrap me up in a basket. See, you can get in yourself and go trust in God. You could turn the, your blessings into a fearfulness. The whole city's trying to kill me. They're all out there looking for me. Now I'm going down this way and a bunch of people call me over to the side and somebody says, they, you know, it's good that sometimes you don't know what God's going to use because you know somebody has a rope in there. What are they going to use a rope for? And then you know the devil's going to say, you know everybody wants to kill you. What are you going to do? 
But see, God says, I got a plan. Follow my footsteps. See, then you see God's plan in action when you're following the footsteps of the righteous. The Lord ordains the footsteps of the righteous. Amen. And God will help you. We're going to pray today, and we're going to ask God, because some of you have been praying for family members and loved ones, just like Saul's life was changed to become Paul. Amen. You might be the only one holding the rope. Amen. In your life, you may say, well... I might be tempted to let go. I pray for this family member. I pray for this loved one. I pray for this spouse. I pray for this neighbor. I pray for this son. I pray for this daughter. I pray for this mother. I pray for this father so long, and it don't seem like nothing's happened. I'm just about ready to let go of the rope. I'm about ready to give up. Don't let go of the rope. Your prayers are going to make a difference. Amen. You may be tempted to let go. You might feel your strength is all wiped out and running out. Amen. I held on so long, I prayed, I cried. I don't know if I can do it any longer. Amen. The rope is the person's life, and the basket may be about to be touched the ground. Just about when you're about ready to let go, God says, I'm about ready to bless. Don't let go. Get in your prayer closet and pray like you never prayed before. Amen. How many know, praise God, there's a prayer closet? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Praise God. When you get alone in your closet, that don't mean you have to have, get all the clues out of some place and lock yourself in a little door. Your prayer closet is where you get alone with God. And you call out on somebody's behalf. And you say, Lord, save my son. Save my family. Save my loved one. Save that one that's been running wild. Amen. And causing all kind of trouble. Every time you turn around, there's more trouble. There's more problems. But the Lord will deliver them out of the trouble because somebody's holding the rope and holding their name up in prayer. And guess what? Don't give up by what you're seeing. Praise God for what you're asking. And don't let go of the rope. They're just about ready to hit the bottom. And guess what? The bottom is where safety is at. When they left Paul down out of that window on that rope in that basket, what if they would say he's about two-thirds of the way down? Let's let go. That fall won't hurt him. And he broke his leg. And became lame. And then they called up with him. And all the attempts and all that effort was just all in vanity. It started out good. See, when you pray, you started out good. You're the help spinner. You're the channel that God can move through. And the Lord teaches us to pray this way. And I want you to pray along with this preacher. Wherever you're at, you might have people that you're praying for. You're holding on the rope, but you're not going to let go. Because Jesus taught us how to pray this way. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, pray therefore, Our Father, go ahead and say it out loud, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is there in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not, lead us not into temptations, but deliver us. Better temptations are problems. Lead us not into the problems, Lord, but deliver us. Deliver means to be set free, restore, and rescue us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and forever. Amen means so be it. Father God, right now, these family members, these loved ones that we're holding on to the rope, Lord, we provide the basket of security and safety. Lord, they will not end up a basket case in the cases of the world. They'll end up in the basket of safety in the arms of Jesus. Lord, we're holding the rope, and we claim them for the kingdom of God. Devil, we're speaking to you right now. We're submitting to God. And we're resisting you, the stronghold. And we're tearing down that stronghold that you have upon their flesh upon their minds, upon their spirit, that they will be delivered and set free. They will come to Jesus Christ. They'll be like the particle son that will return home and come to his cell. After all has hit rock bottom as far as the world's concerned, there's only one turn they can make. It's a godly sorrow of repentance and the right turn back to God, just like Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and called out and said, God, remember when I used to. Lord, there's going to be some calling back, God, I used to walk with you. I used to serve you. And Lord, I'm getting back in the house of the Lord and I'm going to worship you. Lord, the particle son and daughters are coming home. 
The wounded and afflicted are going to be delivered and set free because, Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. And, God, that we know that you're going to be take, make a way to escape, that we might like be able to bear it. Lord, we cried, we bawled, we served you, Lord. We get all called their names out many times. And, Lord, we believe in prayer because Jesus taught us to pray. And, Lord, Jesus, you said, as two of us here on earth touch anything, at the answer of the Father in his name, it shall be done. And, Lord, I'm touching with every believer here, outside of my voice, in this auditorium, in that hotel room. Lord, we're on that there little watch, Lord, or on that little computer, Lord, or on that there little cell phone, wherever it might be, Lord, whoever is listening to this God, I'm touching and agreeing with that person. That lives are going to be changed. Souls are going to be saved. Their lives is going to be turned around. Somebody out there needs to know that somebody's holding the rope on your behalf. God has not forsaken you. He, we are calling you out in prayer right now. Rise up out of that mess. Rise up out of that hunger. Rise up after that delusion. Rise up out of that darkness. Come forth because he loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. God loves you. This preacher loves you. Find yourself a Holy Ghost Spirit filled church somewhere and find that the teaching and the preaching of the word will fill that emptiness and that hunger as you grow in God. God will bless you. Call unto me right now and I will answer you. For I will deliver you out of all your troubles, out of all your problems, out of all your temptation. I'm tempted. No, you're not tempted. You're delivered and set free. I'm bound. No, you're not bound. You're delivered and you're set free. I can't make it. Yes, you can make it because Jesus will help you make it. Come to Him. In Jesus' name we ask. And all the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the truth. And the truth has set us free. Loved ones who hold the rope. Amen. Because God has prepared the way.